exciting moment. And um, and so person after person, they were talking about like the moment they realized that they knew that they were an alcoholic. So it was just like blah blah blah. I used to be fun or whatever it is that they say. And, um, and then uh, a, a gay guy got up to talk, and I knew he was gay because he was fucking gay. And um, <laughs> and he turned on. He was like. I remember I was 18 years old, and I woke up on a beach one day, and I didn't know how I got there, and I realized that that's not social drinking. So I'm 22 years sober, and I plan on enjoying the holidays with my two cats. I'm making two turkeys, one for me, one for the cats. And I just want to thank my higher power, and I want to thank everyone in the room right now. I feel really great about it. And I was like, no, sir, thank you! Thank you, I, I erupted from my seat. Thank, him. Thank God he's not here to bum out our fucking night, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you what, if you wake up on a beach one day and don't know how you got there, that's evidence that you're living in the fucking world, right? You weren't sitting at home eating a Mama Celeste pizza watching fucking million dollar cash drop in the dark. You were on a fucking beach somewhere. That is grounds for great pride. All you have to do in that moment is maybe call your friends and brag, find your shoes and underwear and call the, maybe like at the free clinic for the rash spreads. These are, these are imperatives in that moment. I um I took such umbrage with it that uh <laughs> that I thought I was gonna start a rival organization called A Yay and um, <laughs> and, um meeting Mayor right outside sound like this. Hi there everybody, my name is Maron and I have no intention of putting the bottle down and I need to fuck it. And um since we're talking about the fourth step tonight, which is sex I was wouldn't have had were it not for the glory of alcohol. I want to share this anecdote with you. I was hitchhiking on a major thoroughfare in Boston when a fat man in a cheap car picked me up from the office that I was a whore. And uh, I hopped in his car and he said, hey, would you blow me for 30 bucks? To which I said, 35. And uh, <laughs> I performed the act two completion by a dumpster. I mean, I was so shit-faced I passed out based on the snow before I got paid. But I am still here and I am still fucking drinking, ladies and gentlemen. Make mistakes. <laughs> Grow a set for Christ's sake! I regret nothing! BMS! Live in the world! Dickheads. <laughs> Christ. I am wicked gay, and, uh, and I'm also Iranian, and believe every horrible thing you hear about Iranians. Also, I have nuclear ambition. My mother is like a goat <laughs> devil one. She is a cloven hoof. High priestess of the occult, and um, she is what it is. I um, I was the sweetest little fat gay Iranian child many of you have ever seen. And uh, at the age of six, to help me lose weight, my mother's exact words to me. She looked down at me at the age of six and said, "Man, I have poisoned something in the refrigerator." And then she swept a cake in front of her face and turned to a colony of bats, which absolutely nobody saw coming. Mother fuck. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to discover you all as a people. Um, I I offer you this. I was watching um. Guys Gone Wild Spring Break Explosion. The other day, and uh, if you're familiar with the format, they approach people who are drunker than this, and uh, and and beg them to present their genitals as though in the wild. So. I, uh, I'm watching this, uh, Guys Gone Wild, and they, uh, th there's this incredible episode that actually renewed my faith in art. Um, <laughs> they, they approach this boy who is uh, clearly autistic, but in, in a severe way, like very much autistic, but tan and lean, and, and therefore approachable. Um, and so they, they ask him to present, and they're like, well, show us your dick. He's like, I, I, I can't. And, um, and, and they're like, Okay, well then, what can you show? Uh, he, uh, I, show us your balls. So he's, okay, and so he takes his balls out of his pants and doesn't present them through the convenient portal of mine, which is fucking open. Unbelievable. Uh. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> you were gonna <laughs> so he hoists, and he has, what, what a, like a really, an embarrassment of riches, scrotally. Just a lot of scrotum, and so he's able to actually hoist them up over his belt and then drape them over his pants without presenting any penis, which to, to me is impressive. Like, if I had that much ball, I wouldn't even do stand-up. I would just come out here, and I would present my nuts, and I would put my hand on them, and then present it like a jewelry sale on QVC. And literally, I would be able to look at how the light just dances on these balls. 
<laughs> awesome. If we're home on the game of bounds, give these sons that testicular heft. Our competitors might have balls that look like a trench. Let's just try and have some dignity. Not our ball! So, um, so, um, and I have one ball, my body cannibalized after, but what a disaster. So, um, <laughs> so this kid has his fucking nuts out, and he's like, seriously, like, he's socially retarded. And, uh, and they're like, well, can you do any tricks? And he's like, I can't. And she's like, well, dance for us. He's like, I can't dance. She's like, well, can you do any dance? He's like, I can kind of do the robot. And, uh, and so she's like, do it! So now I am beholden to five minutes of footage of a guy with his nuts draped over his belt loops doing the fucking robot. Like, he's actually doing the robot for five fucking... I'm saying no one would script that at the end of the day. No one, like, someone writing some kind of, like, a big blockbuster movie is not going to write in that scene with the guy who was doing the robot with his nuts exposed, but I assure you that it's important celluloid. <laughs> <laughs> are, is it, are we in a politically correct place? No. No, it's not a politically no. correct place. Like, I, I like, don't know how to process political correctness. I'm uh, fucking home. I came of age in that bullshit. Uh, in college, there was like all the like, sort of propaganda for political correctness. The gays do it a lot. Like, uh, I, the posters that would be like, someone you know might have AIDS. There were a lot of those posters. You see those at, like, community health clinics. And then under it, there was this completely impossibly diverse triptych, this sort of United Colors of Benetton bullshit. Uh, three people, yeah, absolutely, like, it's a Chinese businesswoman uh, holding a black baby dressed as a pilgrim. And then, like, a Viking in a wheelchair. And then a Getty from a distance of 40 yards. Because someone you know may or may not have AIDS. <laughs> So I, 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 get, I, I would get high and then grab like a graffiti marker and I would put a B and an R in front of all of those posters and then draw long synthetic hair on them. So it would be like, somebody who might have braids. And it became a cautionary tale of a different nature, like a moneyed white person, and many of you are those moneyed white people. You may or may not have gone to the Sandals Resort and come back with hookah shells. I shame you and your families. I shame you for the trapeze fun that you may or may not have had that August. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be at the bar. Thank you so much for your attention. Have a great night.